Okay, welcome to the last lesson in Unit 3 on polynomial functions. This is on modeling polynomial functions. This is a really cool lesson. You will definitely have some essay questions in the future. This is a real life modeling experience, which is awesome. I just love it. I think it'll make sense to you guys. Um, if you're going to be in class, then browse over this. Um, but you don't have to necessarily take all the notes. We're going to talk about this and then do an activity together. So use the figure to help you write the expressions for the length, width, and height of the box. You notice they put the length as 10 minus 2x. Well, you see how they've taken a piece of cardboard and they're cutting the corners out of it to make a box, to fold it up and make a box. Now in class, we're actually going to do that. So please come to class because you'll see this much better then. But what they've done is they've said the length must be 10 inches minus however much we cut out for the height. That's how we get the 10 minus 2x. So the width would be 8 minus 2x because it's 8 inches minus the 2x. And then the height of the box would be x. So the volume, you would take all three of those in parentheses. You would go 10 minus 2x times 8 minus 2x and times your x. I like to put the x in the front. Okay. So reflect what units are associated with expressions of length, width, and height. We need to look back over here. The units are inches. So the units for the volume in the box would be volume would be inches times inches times inches would be inches cubed. We actually will look in class at how an inch cube is actually a little cube, an inch on every side, on every dimension. Okay, how can you use your function v of x to find the volume of the box when squares with sides length 3 inches are cut from the corners of the cardboard. What are the dimensions of the box in that case? Okay, so we take this v of x and we have whoops, x, I'll squeeze it in there, times 10 minus 2x times 8 minus 2x. And this is a great thing when you're trying to make a box to ship something. You can actually figure out what volume you want out of the piece of cardboard that you can get without cutting it up first. So uh, we take 3 for our height, 10 minus 2 times 3 would be 6, 8 minus 2 times 3 would be 6. So we get 3 by 4 by 2, which would end up equaling V of x would be 12 times 2, 24 inches cubed. So then you could go to your item that you're trying to ship or the amount of uh, objects that you're trying to ship and see if they'll fit. Uh, if they have a volume of less than 24 inches cubed, you can probably put them in there. Okay. So now it says determine the domain of the volume of the function. Um, I like to look back at the drawing as we're determining the domain. So the first thing they have you look at is the find the constraint of the x on the length of the box. So let's just pretend that we expand these x's in. What they're looking at is how far can you go and still have a dimension down here that you're folding from. So if we went 4 inches, on each side would be 4 inches, 4 inches, that's 8 inches, that would still leave 2 inches in here. Okay, so that would be fine. Can we go more? And what is our limit? If you are saying the most that we could do is, is 5, because 5 would cause it to not have a dimension on that other side, then you are seeing it correctly. And you can mathematically solve that by getting the x by itself. We would subtract 10 on each side. So it would be negative 2x is greater than negative 10. Divide by negative 2, it'll be x is less than 5. The reason being 
you can't go more than five. And you need to be less than five, not equal to five, because if you're equal to five, you have no dimension on that last side. Okay, now they want to do the width of the box. Well, if you remember right, the width was eight inches. So eight minus two X. Do the same thing, and you'll find that X has to be less than four. That should make sense to you if you're thinking about how far in can it come before that last dimension uh, disappears. The most you could come in on each side would be four, and then you'd hit that eight. So it can't be equal to four. And then find the constraint on the height. Well, you've got to have a height on your box, so it's got to be greater than zero. Otherwise, you'll just have that flat piece of cardboard. Okay, so we go within the limits. Um, zero is our bottom limit because x has to be greater than zero. But as far as our top limit, um, if we go greater than four, if we went up to five, then notice we couldn't get the five on this side. So we have to go with that closer restraint of four. So x, your height has to be between zero and four. Okay, uh, for this unit, we actually do a project for this unit. You building a box and explaining these constraints to me. So make sure that you uh, understand this, ask a lot of questions in class. What would happen to the volume of X if you took uh, on either endpoint of the values the domain inequality? Explain what this why this makes sense in the context of the problem. Okay, so basically what they're saying is what would happen if we went to zero? If we went to zero, you'd have no height. What would happen if we went clear to four? On that side where you have the eight, if you went clear to four, you would have no, um, no width left because you would put it all into height and all into length and there would be no width left because your eight has been um, has been completely eliminated by four and four on each side. Okay, so you want to explain that in your own words here. Draw it out if you need to. Explain why the domain f of x is not zero is le or x is less than x is greater than zero and less than five, and that again is in regards to that five being so big that you can't get a five for your height out of a side where it's eight inches total. Okay, ask questions if you need to, but you need to get that in your own words on those problems. Multiply the factors, v of x, to find v of x as a polynomial in standard form. So all you need to do here is take what we had on the front side, x times 10 minus 2x, Distribute that, you would get 10x minus 2x squared. And now box or foil that with 8 minus 2x. And then once you've box or foiled that, then write your answer in here in standard form. Put in the cubic, the x cubed first, minus, and then you'll have an x squared and then plus your x, okay? So just fill in those numbers once you've squared it. Now it says to find the value of x that results in a box, the volume of 48, set the polynomial that you got right here to 48. Because you want the volume to equal 48 and then you solve it, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and show you um, show you with that uh, equation what I would do. So I would bring the 48 across. So my next step here, I would have 4x cubed minus 36x squared plus 80x minus 48 because I brought it across. Now I would divide everything by 4 just to reduce things from being quite such big numbers. So divide everything by 4. And with that we get x cubed 
minus 12x squared. Oh, I'm sorry, 9 x squared plus 20x minus 12. There's the 12. Equals 0. Okay, now you just do four term factoring. Actually, let's see if they even want you to, to make calculations easier. Divide both sides of the equation by the greatest common factor. Oh, that's all the further that they, that they wanted you to go there. And now on the next page, what they have us do is they have us, wait a minute, could we go four term? Let's just see with this. They're going to have us do the rational zeros, but I want to see if we could go four term. I always like to avoid the rational zeros if we can. So we would get x squared, x minus 9. Oh yeah, that's not going to work, because x minus 9, 9 won't go into um, 12. So we're going to have to go to the rational zeros here. And the leading coefficient. Again was, let me just write it up here, x cubed minus 9x squared plus 20x minus 12. Okay, so now we can look at that. Solve the equation. First determine the possible rational zeros. So we take all the factors of 12 over 1. So we go plus or minus 12, plus or minus 1 plus or minus 6, plus or minus 2. I'm just taking 12 over the 1 to get these. Uh, plus or minus 4, plus or minus 3. Okay. I always start with 1, just to see if it will by chance divide in there. So use synthetic substitution to find the 0. Um, just see if we get lucky. If not, then we have to go to each one of them and try. So the coefficient there is 1, negative 9, positive 20, negative 12. Drop that down, 1. 1 times 1 is 1. Negative 9 and positive 1 is negative 8. 1 times negative 8 is negative 8. 20 and negative 8 is 12. 1 times 12, yay! We are so good. So. A zero um, in our remainder, so we know that one is a factor, or I mean one is a zero. That means that um, x minus one is one of the factors. Now let's go ahead and bring this down. x squared minus eight x plus twelve. Now from there we can play the x game. The two numbers that would multiply to be 12 and add to be negative 8 would be x minus 6, x minus 2. Set those to 0 so we know we'd have 2 and 6 as our rational zeros. And I just like to write what these factors are so that we don't forget. Because they'll come up in useful just thinking about the context of the problem. Okay, interpret the results. Which of the zeros are in the domain? of v of x. Okay, well, let's go back and look at what our domain would be. Um, the domain, remember, we have to be less than 4, so we can't have that 6 there from our domain earlier, so we only have 1 and 2 as, uh, as actual 0, so x equals 1 and x equals 2, because we had those limitations before. So for each of these zeros, what are the corresponding dimensions of the box? Okay, so if we have a 0 at 1, let's just plug 1 in there and see what this dimension is. 
1 times 2, no, oh, I'm sorry, times 10 minus 2 times 1 times 8 minus 2 times 1. See, what we're doing is we're trying to find out what dimensions on this box, um, on the x, well, where is it? The x times 10 minus 2x times 8 minus 2x. We're trying to find out what the dimensions on that box will be if we want a volume of 48. That's why we're restricted back to our domain of being 0 to 4. And when this 6 came up bigger than that 4, we say, ah, it can't be 6. It's got to be 1 or 2. And so we're thinking the height of the box needs to be 1 or 2. So here we're checking to see if the height is 1. What does the volume come out at? So 10 minus 2 is 8. 8 minus 2 is 6, and then we have a 1 on the front, that equals 48. So we found one way to make the box with a volume of 48 cubic inches. That's with a height of 1. Now let's see if we have a height of 2. So we go 2 times 10 minus 2 times 2 times 8 minus 2 times 2. 10 minus 4 is 6. 8 minus 4 is 4. And bring down that 2. 2 times 6 is 12 times 4 is 48 inches cubed. So those are our two ways that we can make that box have a volume of 48 inches cubed as if we had a height of 1 or a height of 2. Check that the values of x that you found above result in a box with a volume of 48 inches. We just did that. Um, oh, we didn't look at the dimensions of the box. We didn't really answer that one. So you could put this answer down here. And for up here, uh, we could write these dimensions. When it's F1, the box would be 1 by 6 by 8. When it's F2, the dimensions we said were 2 by 6 by 4. I think that's what I said. 6 and 4. Yeah. Okay. So uh, that gives those two. Uh, given that it's possible to create a box with a volume of 48 inches cubed, do you think it's possible to create a box with a volume of 24 inches cubed? Explain. Well, yes. We should be able to create a box with 24 inches cubed. Um, because you're within your domain. I don't see why they're asking this question. Yes, would be that the domain 0 to x uh, and to 4. Um, and if we think about it, when it's at 1, when x was equal to 1, the volume was equal to uh, 48. So it won't be exactly half of that, but, but you should be able to go 0 to 1 somewhere in there and create that volume of 24. You'd have to plug it in and play with it some and see how it came out, but you should be able to do that. Okay, using a graphing calculator to graph the volume Vx, enter Vx in the equation editor. Okay, let's do this. Um, oops, equation editor. Let's clear that. Hopefully, you can see what's happening on that. Okay, and now it says to enter V of x, so we'll go ahead and we'll go. Um, alpha x times 10 minus 2 alpha x parentheses closed times 8 minus 2 alpha x parentheses closed okay and they give us the dimensions of the window so let's go to window 
and set our dimensions. X minimum is zero. X maximum is about 4.5. Um, the scale on the X is one square to every half, so 0 0.5. Uh, y minimum is 0, y maximum is 65, uh, the scale is every square is equal to 5, and now let's go to graph, beautiful, okay, so we want to graph that. Um, now, you guys were playing around with it in class and discovery. If you go second graph, you actually see the table. That's a pretty nice way to, to trace it, is to go to your x values there. Trying to get there. Okay, at 0, it's 0. At 1, it's 48. Two, it's 48. Well, we knew that from up above. At three, it's 24. And at four, it's zero. We know that from our limits already. I could have done that without the graphing calculator. So let's go to graph. And this time, let's follow what it says to do. It says second calc trace and to go to the maximum and hit enter now it's really awesome because it asks us what is our left boundary and what they mean by that is what's your left uh, bound that your domain has and our left bound is zero Enter. Now it says right bound. Well, our right bound is that 4 over there. We're just telling it what the x is restricted in. And then guess, I just want to enter again and see what it shows me. The guess from the calculator of the, um, of the maximum value that occurs is when x is 1.5 roughly, that the y is 52.5. Okay, so what this means in context of the problem is that if we get a height on the box that's at 1.5 inches, then we'll have the maximum volume that we can have for this box at roughly 52.5 inches cubed. Okay, I would expect you to go back, connect these dots. Bring your, uh, bring your maximum in at 1.5, at about 52.5, up in there, and connect all that. Because you literally could connect it, okay? Um, kind of cool to see how we can maximize and minimize the volume of a box, huh? Without cutting it up and destroying it. Interpret the result. What is the coordinates of the point where the maximum value occurs? Represent in the context of the problem. I just explained this. Rewind the video and just fill in what I said there uh, in your own words. How does your graph of v of x support the domain you found earlier of 0 to x? 0 um, is less than x and x is less than 0. Well, here's what I would suggest when you're looking at that. How does the, how does the graph support that? Well, let's just go back to window. Go second quit and go uh, window and let's go beyond what our x values were. Let's go up to 6 and I just randomly went to 6 so that it gives us plenty to look at. And now let's go um, on the y, let's go to a minimum so that we can see what's happening to the graph after it crosses. Let's go a minimum 4. Oh, maybe we better go 5, since it's multiples of 5. Okay, so now let's go to graph and see what happens.
Oh, so do you see? It dips down right there between the 4 and the 5. It actually intersects at 0, 4, and 5, which we could have seen from our algebra earlier. But uh, the restriction is keeping it within the domain, is keeping our values within the positive ranges, which is what we could cut out of a box. We can't cut a negative amount of inches. Okay, So you explain that in your own words. You know that v of x has a maximum value on the domain 0 is less than x is less than 4. But does v of x have a maximum value when the domain is not restricted? This is a great question. Glad that we graphed this. Because look, when it's restricted, there's our maximum. But if we let off those restrictions, do you see where it's going? Remember, it's a cubic function. So it's going to infinity without bound. So there would be no maximum then. Okay, suppose you have a second piece of cardboard that is 16 inches long, 6 inches wide. Please don't do this on the video. Don't do it on your own. Come to class. We're going to do this. We're going to actually look at pieces of cardboard, and I want you guys to uh, figure out these problems. I'll probably actually change this up a little bit for some. Okay, you have a great night. Thank you so much.